Fossi, thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a real, real honor to be here uh, speaking. And um, yeah, so a little about me. I'm a fourth year civil engineering student at Imperial. Um, and I am the chair of the civil engineering society there. So I'm the student voice for about a thousand or so students in the department. But I'm also the co-founder of the Intercollegiate Engineering Alliance, which is bringing together students for mutual benefit from across the world. A little bit more about that later, but I'll, I'll be referencing a conference that we had a few, few weeks ago. So um, watch out for that. And yes, I'm just hoping to, to sort of present a student perspective. Um, and I might add a, a quick disclaimer to that. Uh, you know, what, what I'm saying is definitely not going to represent um, all students' ideas at all. You know, they've got to be between five and 10,000 students studying civil engineering in the UK alone. So, so do take a bit of, pin, a bit of a pinch of salt uh, with what, what I, I do uh, come out with. But um, there are a few questions I'm gonna try and answer um, over the course of this um, brief 20 minute session. And um, I'm sure many, many of the former speakers have answered these quite eloquently and I'm going to try and touch them in my own style. But um, why students? You know, why, why is it that students need to, to be an integral part of this movement? And I think um, it's safe to say that young people are the future and change does start from the bottom. And time and time again, students show themselves to be at the forefront of change, you know, whether that's the, the Hong Kong protests, whether that's Earth Day, that was uh, largely student led or the US civil rights movement. Um, and, you know, the climate emergency is, is no exception. You know, if you, if you look at Fridays for Future, it's almost entirely student, student led. And, you know, you know industry, it, it's worth focusing efforts on students because industry, the construction industry, we, we know is, is one of the slowest adapters of change, you know, not least of all in the, in the digital revolution and, you know, McKinsey in their 2017 report on productivity uh, demonstrated that, you know, the construction industry could be up to 60% more, more productive and more efficient. Um, and, you know, KPMG in a recent study took about 37% of workers in the construction industry are now millennials. So it's, it's really worthwhile uh, spending time with students, get it right from, from the bottom um, and that change will, will follow through. So the, the, the other questions that I'm gonna be trying to attempt to answer are sort of the why, the what and the how. Um, so, the why, we need to answer the why. Why, why, do we, why do we need to do something about climate change? Um, I think a lot of people have spoken about that already in, in a much better way than I could. But also, you know, why engineers? What role do we play? And um, I think first impressions matter. So some things that uh, I heard on my first day from various lecturers, uh, that someone who fixes your boiler is not an engineer, and that you know, doctors save lives, engineers save thousands. My brother, who's a doctor, was not too thrilled when I brought that one home. The, um, but my point here is, from the very beginning, it's 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 so important to impress upon students the responsibility that we have as engineers and the consequences of poor engineering actions, and sort of to give them the good, the bad, and the ugly from the get go. Um, Again, these slides you, you, everyone is probably all too familiar with and it's touched upon in much better detail by uh, the likes of Will Arnold and, and others earlier today. But I would just say to impress upon them, the, the devastating state of the climate emergency is, is quite important. Um, uh, but also the role of engineers within the climate emergency and you know that we've got the capacity to do a lot of bad looking at the construction industry as we saw tonight we're saying you know 40 percent of global greenhouse gases from construction industry and you know a chatham house talks about the concrete industry be alone being eight percent of global uh, emissions making it the third largest country in terms of co2 emissions you know i bet a lot of students don't know that and just at a more granular level that you know, a wagon of concrete, that's 18 round trips from London to Rome. So just trying to press upon this, this responsibility to the students and something that uh, Bill Baker and I struck D great, um, the, the engineer behind the Burj Khalifa, he talked about at this conference I mentioned, 
he, he asked, are we enablers of excess as engineers? We, we can be, I think we can be. And I think that's part of being an engineer is, is that responsibility. Um, so trying to impress that upon students is, is quite important um, from the get go. And um, Mike, Dr. Mike Kirk, and uh, who I'm sure many of you are familiar with, and uh, Emma Crichton, Director of Engineers at Borders, and Helen Chartier um, uh, at C40 Cities. In their talk, they talk about globally responsible engineering in a climate crisis uh, along the lines of what Luke has just covered. And they talk about exactly that responsibility. Um, and Emma even made reference to Hippocratic Oath, potentially for engineers, which is something that I had come up with in a recent Engineering Matters podcast she'd been involved in. And students at the conference really loved that. So maybe that's something you want to bring in. But yes, impressing upon them, uh, students, from the very beginning, that responsibility that we have, and that we have got the capacity to do a lot of harm um, as well. So onto the what. So what, what's the end goal? What do we need to be teaching students? And, you know, we've had a lot of different ideas about this earlier today and, you know, none of them are wrong. And uh, I'd like to present maybe a slightly alternative uh, viewpoint um, and say that we need to teach a mindset. We need to build a sustainable mindset that analyzes, explores, asks those difficult questions. Do we need to build? Can we renovate? Can we use better materials? And proposes and supports bold solutions um, but you know that also adapts and evolves because best practices in sustainable engineering are constantly changing and engineers must be able to change with them so i would say the imperial civil engineering mantra definitely embraces this um, and it, it doesn't endeavor to teach you everything the they say learn how you learn you're constantly learning in the industry I heard that at um, at that IEA conference, and you know it's something I've experienced. Anytime you go to to a new role, a new project, there's a steep learning curve, but also you know in terms of your norms, and um, you've got to stay up to date whether that's new Euro code or software. So, so the takeaway I would say for this is to 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 be aiming to teach a sustainable mindset, to be open to learning and evolving, um, but also how. So. Something I come across through my own sort of entrepreneurial journey that I'm doing is we're talking a lot about communication. And I'm sure many, many of you might have heard of this, this famous UCLA study by Dr. Marabians um, about communication that 7% of it is, uh, is the actual content, like the spoken words and uh, all the rest of it is body language and voice or tone and made me think, there's got to be parallels for teaching. The, uh, now, it's not to say I'm going to delve in here right now and tell you, you know, think about your posture while you're living lectures or that kind of thing. But um, it made me think about the parallels teaching in terms of the delivery, the delivery, how you're delivering it, um, your, your learning materials is, is almost perhaps more important than what you're delivering. Um, and I have a few ideas here for, for things that you might uh, try to think about in the delivery. Um, for example, student-led learning. Um, you know, uh, students, students, students have some just great initiatives of their own. They really enjoy going away and uh, doing their own learning and research. And, um, you know, constraints do lead to creativity. So try to channel that. So um dr cook um reference early is also a professor of uh creative design uh within the course at imperial and he tries to do exactly just that in the second year brief he talks about using the un sustainable development goals and channeling students um to try and find a solution of their own but also giving them these constraints um in terms of being location specific um and uh developing a brief um, all these kinds of things, these constraints lead to creativity. Um, and yeah, so I'd say to try and give them the support and the space safe to do that, because students have some great ideas. And a big part of that as well is the extracurriculars, what goes on beyond the course. Um, they're so important. It's an opportunity to apply the learning and to be creative and solve problems. And 
you know, there are just so many events um, and initiatives and hackathons, particularly specific to the climate emergency uh, from, you know, societies and institutions and universities. And, you know, here's just a snippet. But um, it, it's really fantastic for the students getting into a dialogue and, as I said, applying the learning and being creative and problem solving. So I'd say spread the word, offer your expertise, offer your support, facilities, whatever you can to do because um, these, these are so important. And that's definitely something we've been trying to do within the civil engineering societies, sort of getting students talking about those deeper, more fundamental issues with our sort of Knights of Engineering philosophy when students and staff come together and you know, uh, mull over these different problems. But we've also been collaborating with some other university societies like the Oxford Engineering Society. And we've also been doing some staff seminar series um, where staff are presenting some of their own work, lots of it in response to the climate emergency and students love to hear that get involved and, you know, love to put, put people in those, answer those challenging questions and all of that. So I think that's fantastic. And also got the Intercollegiate Engineering Alliance, which I've been part of. So that's sort of taking advantage of the um, digital way of life and trying to bring together students for mutual, mutual benefit and level the playing field. Um, so we've got sort of our mission there and, a, you know, we're trying to make an ecosystem and bring together uh, students to collaborate and get into discussion. Um, you know, we've got access, I think, now to a pool of uh, over 30,000 students from 70 different universities and 80 different countries, you know, from University of Sao Paulo to South Africa, Australia, Nigeria, Iran, you can see the spread just there from all different uh, types of institutions and um, I'll drop a link in the in the chat later on perhaps um, your university and students might like to get involved but that's just been a great ecosystem to, to speak about items and that are important to students and we hosted this conference um, a few a few weeks ago pioneers engineering the next decade we had some uh, really world-class speakers um, and what they wanted to speak about many of them was this theme of, of sustainability and had some great questions from students students were always interested um, in response to this climate emergency about the dilemma of sort of third world improvements and solutions and constraints um, being imposed on these less developed countries as opposed to more expensive difficult solutions to remedy the problems we have in the first world um countries it was very interesting the whole ethics of it but the feedback was that students loved this kind of environment to speak with each other find out more what was going on in the industry and so on um and the feedback was that they wanted a climate conference um so i think students really keen to to get involved with these things and yes um offer them the, those opportunities and support them um Another thing that came out of that, and I think is an important part of any um, engineering course, is uh, sort of reflection. And what I took away from that conference um, was the thinking about the, the thinking. The, the speakers had done a lot of reflection upon that, um, you know, of, their, of their career, where they was going, um, in their industry, um, all these types of things. And I think that's an important part of the engineering process is going back, analyzing, breaking it down. Why did we take uh, these decisions when we did? What could we do better next time? What could we improve above all uh, from a sustainable perspective? So encouraging students to do this sort of thinking is, is really important. And um, this guy, Pari Singh, an Imperial Mekenj graduate, who's um, a Forbes 30 under 30, he's, got, he's found his own company called The Engineering Company. He said quite something quite interesting in response to, to a question that was asked. He said, we've got a tendency to focus too much on engineering skills and not the engineering process enough, um, which I thought was fascinating. And I think, I think it, it definitely is true from, from my experiences to date how we think and collaborate is just as if not more important than what we present and it sort of goes back to that side on that on the how and then that communication and and delivery 
Um, and I think Imperial definitely really strives to teach that and um, thoroughly incorporate this into its teaching. Um, they use a lot of the engineering design process as well. And um, I'm just going to give a few examples here of uh, some items of reflection that we're asked to do as part of the course. You know, we've got deliverables for, for the sketching and modeling that even include annotating that exact process diagram with our learnings. But below that, we've got we asked to do a retrospective from that creative design week brief that I shared. Um, we're, we're also asked to look back um, on, a, on a termly basis, submit these reflection forms uh to 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 our personal tutors also asked to think about what skills we've developed in the group design process um and you know lessons learned and you know why we took decisions that we did and what are the options we evaluated and i think this kind of thinking and um is is quite important particularly when it comes to a sustainable aspect and um i know from industry um a lot of your learnings, um, you they don't necessarily the lessons learned is a very important part of the project, particularly from um, from a, an environmental standpoint. So starting to ingrain that um, from the very beginning is is crucial. Um, student feedback. This is this is another big one. When when was the last time that you actually you actually took in genuine feedback from students? Um, I think conferences like this are great um, to do so. Um, and I sort of have an important message for both students and teaching staff alike. And that, that would be that um, the students are the customer of the university. And you know, at least where I'm from in the US, they say customer is, um, is queen or king. So it's important to be, be getting their, their feedback along the way. Um, in response to, again, any climate teaching you might have, don't be afraid to go out there and, and ask. And I think Imperial is really fantastic at that. They've got some great feedback mechanisms. Um, so many of them, you know, at the end of each term, students ask to submit an online evaluation, which is anonymous and it's an opportunity to give both qualitative and quantitative feedback um, to the professors to help them improve the teaching and you know how you give the feedback is so important as we saw earlier in terms of communication so students are actually briefed beforehand about how to make it constructive you know we also have a mid-year and end of year review with each year group every module is run through by the director of undergraduate studies with the module um, professor or professors and students from each year group present they talk what works what didn't work what could be improved you know, we've got two to groups, both one and one and group sessions with plenty of dialogue and opportunities to sort of give feedback indirectly. We've got class representatives as well that can channel feedback. Um, I think, you know, interesting bits of feedback uh, sort of note aside is that open book exams are, are far preferred and they're actually much closer to the work in industry, which I'm going to touch upon next. Um, and that students want more about the climate emergency. So it's something that's close to their hearts. But very important point, it's, it's useless to receive feedback if you're not going to act on it. So uh, something I feel Imperial has been quite excellent at um, is that each year they're constantly changing the course. The course that I did in my first year is vastly different to that which you know the first years are, are doing just now. And they really do take on board the feedback that they receive. But um, on to sort of one of my last points is connecting to industry. I think many people over here will be the first to admit there's always has and perhaps always will be a disconnect from universities to industry. And how do we manage that gap? How do we bring it closer together, particularly in response to the climate emergency and get a dialogue going? There's so much great work going on in terms of research. How do we bring that to industry um, and vice versa? Um, and you know, how do you apply that learning and understand best industry practices? And I've been really fortunate to have a bunch of industry experience so far, and that's definitely helped me appreciate a number of different things in terms of the importance of that mindset that we were talking about, but also getting to know different companies, how they operate, what interests me, see how each of them responding to the climate emergency and sort of bring black learning and discussion to that classroom environment. Um, and, you know, Imperials all over that. Um, You've got a whole bunch of modules, professional engineering practice, and you know the, some of those talks really 
impacted me and sort of shaped my learning, particularly the one by Fella Mitchell and the constraints to creativity, but it also presents some of the best industry practice and you get sort of the practical implications, applications of their learning. Um, we've also uh, got a number of group design projects with industry. And I'm just going to whiz through a few of the different industry things that the Civil Engineering Society does. We sort of try to bring the industry to students. Um, and we run a whole bunch of careers fairs and, and talks. Um, and, you know, it's great for them to get to understand what, what's really happening, particularly from those site visits. And also we do um, an international a tour with CISOC. So it's, it's excellent to, to expose students to how different countries do things differently as well. And also to get on site, see what happens on site is very different to that which is planned in the design office or studied. So to bear those in mind. Sort of my, my last key point here um, is to be subtle. Don't greenwash when it comes to sort of teaching about, um, about, the, about sustainability, unless it's a given module, of course, you know, you could, could lose the students. And what I would say is the imperial approach is these T-shaped engineers. The, the stem of the T is your specialty and expertise, your specific knowledge top of your T is your broad base of knowledge. And I would say perhaps controversially, the um, sustainability is towards this top part of the stem of the T. All of the T is essential and integral to being an engineer, much like risk and safety, um, which are all should be incorporated part of the process of any major sort of coursework brief. And here, um, taking a look at some of the group design project titles and deliverables, we can see that many of them are sustainable focused. Um, so try and think about um, incorporating these subtle deliverables and elements. Um, and my final thoughts. Um, well, so I'm gonna end almost with this um, Bill Gates quote that people often overestimate what will happen in the next two years and underestimate what will happen in 10. So, Drawing on this, this past summer, I've been with Tideway as a site engineer on the east part of the contract, so having a discussion with General Foreman and two of the foremen there. And um, General Foreman said, if 10 years ago, somebody had told me that, um, so it was National Suicide Prevention Day that day, somebody so told me that we'd be sending off operatives to go away and do mental health first aid training, that we'd be doing presentations on um, you know, suicide awareness, that we'd have an occupational health nurse on site a couple of days a week, um, that it would be health, safety, and well-being. Um, I'd have told them they're nuts. So if we can take the same approach to safety uh, over the next decade. Uh, if, we, if we can take the same approach to sustainability as we have uh, to, to safety over the past decade, um, moving forwards for the next decade, then um, we should be in, in good stead. But uh, thank you so much. Probably tired of hearing me speaking, but um, thank you so much for inviting me as a student to, to, to offer a student perspective. And I really hope that you'll do so again at um, a conference that's so based around students learning.